Hello, and welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen, and today we'll be covering unit testing infrastructure in Python. Specifically, we're going to take an existing Pulumi example, so we're not going to go build a ton of new stuff today. Uh, but we, what, we, what we will do is build a ton of tests, or a bunch of tests. And we're going to take an existing example, add some tests to it, make sure that it's doing what we expect it to do, and really just explore the superpower of unit testing in Pulumi. So this is one of the new features we've added in Pulumi 2.0. Uh, a couple episodes ago, I mentioned kind of some of the things we were doing to 2.0, how to upgrade to 2.0, and one of the superpowers in 2.0 is unit testing, which you would expect to be able to do for code. So let's get started. Uh, I've already actually um, gone ahead and copied over uh, an existing example. It's called GCP PY functions. If you go to uh, github.com slash Pulumi slash examples, you'll find hundreds of examples that we have in our repository. Uh, this is just one of them. It's a fairly simple example. If we look at the uh, main PY here, uh, really it's just, you know, we're going to do some configuration and then let me get rid of this terminal. Uh, and then we're going to uh, create a bucket and then take all the things that are in, in the source code path, which is uh, up here, so just right here. Uh, we'll take those things, put it into an archive, and then stick that into a bucket object. And then we will uh, create a function uh, along with a IAM member uh, as part of that. So if you if we actually run a Pulumi Pre, you can actually see what this would look like if we were to run this. And we could run Pulumi up and have this actually uh, create the function and everything, but that's not really testing. That's manual testing. That's not unit testing. That's not really going to be a good way to ensure we have maintainable code going forward. So let's actually write some tests. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, mention a couple things. One is uh, I added PyTest and PyTest Watch. So if you're following along at home, um, you'll have to add these to your requirements. I've already installed these requirements using pip. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, refactor the code a little bit and move everything from here before the exports into here. And here I'll import Pulumi and uh, import um, Punks. So if we let me pre our refactored code which should still work, which it does, obviously. Um, and now let's do some testing. So let's create a file. Let's call it test funks. And let's import PyTest. And we'll also import Lumi. And we can totally imagine just like, you know, let's just get this going here. We'll we're going PyTest watch. And um, we'll create, you know, we can, you can totally imagine like, you know, test something and uh, we should see this pass. Great. So that's, that's expected. And let's actually go and find the docs for testing because I can never remember exactly what I have to do here. So um, let's go to the unit testing page and okay, so great. I was already on Python. So I need to uh, add the mocks, so let's do that. So do this. And then after we set the mocks, we need to actually write the test. So we need to um, import our actual code, and then we need to uh, write have these as, as part of our test. So let's, let's do this, uh, do some copy paste for this. So we're going to test funks. And um, Let's look at what we want to test. So, let me close some of these. So I think the first thing we probably want to test is that um, this bucket actually matches the, the bucket that we uh, create up here, right? We want to make sure that we're actually wiring this in correctly versus, you know, sticking this object into some place we don't expect. Um, so let's let's do that. So we'll call it test uh, object in bucket, and uh, as we saw in the example earlier, I should go back to here. What we typically will do is we'll take you know some of the outputs that come, and then we'll just make sure that 
the things that come from those outputs uh, are correct. So uh, we'll do the same thing here. So we'll return And what are we going to check? We're going to check uh, funks, uh, the bucket, or specifically the name. And we're also going to check that the uh, source archive object, uh, that these match. So we'll create this buckets match function. And so we know that the actual bucket name and the source bucket args, destructure that, and then we'll just assert that these are the same. So let's see if this runs. Okay, great. So we got a passing test, as we should expect. And to make sure we're not doing anything too crazy here, let's change this to, you know, something, and we should have this test fail. Right, and so now we can see that uh, this, is not, this is not correct. So let's undo that. Actually, it's interesting. You can see this is a, this is none uh, because there's there's nothing passed here um, to this bucket name. But we could you can totally imagine uh, if we, if I wanted to spend the time, I could also go up to here in the mocks and also uh, modify some of the mocks to make sure that those all get set correctly. But okay, great. So we do that. Um, what else should we test? Let's also see. Um, ah, right. Okay, so. We should make sure that we have the right runtime, uh, and we should also make sure that this entry point actually works. So let's let's make a couple more tests. Um, so we'll call this um, test function runtime. And actually, we don't have to do this. We just have to say. Um, Here we just want to make sure that the art the runtime is Python thirty seven. So, uh, oops, what is it not like? The, oh, it, it probably doesn't like that this is on its own line. Yeah. So let's make a function for this. Uh, runtime check runtime. This just takes one argument, which is the RT. Okay, so we should have two passing. Oh, and I forgot to annotate this. That's why you can see it, I, it says it's a skip test. Uh, now we should have two running tests and they're both passing. Great. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to check was that this entry point is actually a valid entry point. Um, and one of the cool things we should, let's see, I, I think this should work, um, but let's make sure. So let's copy this and test function entry point. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? is we're going to first uh, going to import the actual function itself. So that's um, functions.main. So if we go back here, you can see that we have uh, this here. Um, and then uh, we want to functions.main.get we actually want to get the attribute off of this and what we want to get is um, the entry point so that's EP so we basically what we're doing here now is we're introspecting into that module to attempt to get this attribute of the um, of the module and then we're going to assert that it's callable So just put this all into one line, actually. And I think that should work. 
And it does. And uh, we can actually make sure we're doing the right thing here. Let's change this to like get, you know, something. And that should not be callable. And you can actually see it has no attribute named get something, which makes sense. Um, and what's also cool is if we go to the function here and we change this to, let's, let's just create a, a value here. Let's just call it like, you know, some val equals true. Um, and we test, we change this to uh, some val. So the way that this will fail now is that, you know, it's not callable. So unlike before where we couldn't get the attribute here, there is actually a thing in there called some val, but it's just not, it's not just, it's just not callable. So um, we're, we're verifying that the, the entry point is actually a callable function. Um, you can imagine doing all sorts of additional introspection to make sure that the function returns things that, you know, in a certain way, or has a certain signature or whatever it is, um, in, in terms of, you know, really making sure that uh, the function we're providing to, to GCP is what we actually wanted to do. So I think that's, that's probably where I'll stop. I think you can, you know, just want to give you a sense of how to write some tests um, in the unit testing framework. Uh, we use some introspection to really get a sense of whether or not we're passing in the right thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's actually, you know, you can see in a few lines of code, it's very easy. I can use Python test watch to, uh, PyTest watch rather, to, to, uh, to actually, you know, iterate on my tests as I'm going through. And hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please subscribe and like this episode. Uh, if you have ideas for future episodes, please leave them in the comments. Always happy to uh, respond to feedback. And yeah, follow us on Twitter, and we'll hope to see you next time on Polymi TV. We have a special guest coming for next week. I promise you will very much like what we show next time as well. We'll cover more testing, but even more in depth uh, next time. So have a great week, and see you next time.